What's up, mighty boys and girls, it's Ranger Boy here, and welcome to a discussion video which really will hit a lot of sensitive nerves. But no need to worry, it's not the typical X, Y vs. Sun and Moon discussion, because I actually can back up my points with evidence, while also praising both. So in today's video, I want to talk about the one reason, one reason, why Sun and Moon just can't, and sadly might never, surpass X, Y. So if you want to know more, then grab some popcorn, grab some cookies, and let's do this. Okay, Long, what could that one reason be? It's the animation art style isn't it? Smug face. My answer is no, it's actually not. Sun and Moon's animation is indeed so much more different compared to XY, but it doesn't automatically mean that it's worse. As I stated in one of my past videos, the Sun and Moon animation and art style is actually easier to handle for the animators, while also being able to draw facial expressions. What they actually do with those facial expressions is another controversy I don't want to dig deeper in, but at the end of the day, it all depends on your personal taste. Some people, including myself, prefer the more sharper and more intense style of XY, while other people prefer the more light-hearted and smoother style of Sun and Moon. Well, if it's not that, then it must be the story, right? That also kinda depends on your personal taste. XY is that kind of story that begins very low, but then builds up over time. The story builds up, and it builds up more and more, until it reaches a climax, which we could see very well during many occasions, like for example Ash vs. Clement, Ash vs. Corinna, and the second best storyline, Serena's journey to become the Carlos Queen. The first of course being the Ash Green Ninja storyline. But I will be honest, I have a total bias for that one. The deep and connection between Ash and Greninja and the many crises they had to overcome are lovely. But that, of course, is not a reason to throw any shade at Sun and Moon, because Sun and Moon is also able to create amazing stories, from action-packed and intense ones until deeply emotional ones that will make you cry tears of sorrow. And even though I personally don't like the inconsistency in stories, I also think that this is a benefit of Sun and Moon, that instead of being a build-up progression like XY, it's more like a roller coaster ride, which really messes up with your feelings. One day you are super happy with Sun and Moon, and the other day you are so, so disappointed with Sun and Moon. I'm um, sorry, a little bit out of character, yeah? So I guess it's the characters. And honestly, I love all of the characters. Both generations have amazing characters who you easily could identify with. All characters get some relevant screen time and dedicated arcs slash stories. The only thing that bothers me about Sun and Moon is that since the group is so big, they sometimes can't really give every character some much deserved screen time. And by the time they finally pull the trigger, it kind of feels rather late and can cause some inconsistency in their progression. For example, Kiawa, early on establishing himself as Ash's rival, only to mention their potential rivalry, seven episodes later, or Marlo stating her dream of creating her own menu, only to start with that menu creation 90 episodes later, like okay. But same goes for example with Clement, where he had some proper build up between him and Ash, only to barely do anything after that. So yeah, both have development issues, it's just that the ones of Sun and Moon is just so much more obvious. So long, what is the reason, the one main reason why Sun and Moon just can't overcome XY? Well, I will tell you, it can be described with one word, it's the hype. And what I specifically mean by that is creating a certain kind of hype to not only draw people's attention, but also to keep the people so that they will continue to watch the anime. XY was able to draw people's attention, and especially outside of the hardcore anime fanbase, basically from day one with their improved and more polished art style and animation. Another reason was how they showcased Ash. In the past, we have seen him being more of a goofball and sometimes even pulling out things which just would make you facepalm, but this version of Ash was so much more competent and downright badass that you couldn't help but to cheer for the guy. Then there are other factors which kept people to watch the anime, and one major factor is one that many of you would consider your main reason, and it's Amor Shipping. Many people continue to watch XY because they wanted to see how the relationship between Ash and Serena developed. A girl who finally openly shows her affection for Ash without interpreted hints by the fans. But with the beginning of Amor Shipping, people started to not only care about the shipping itself, but they also started to care about Serena as a character. And then you and I started to care about the other characters as well, which in the end would lead to a deepened bond between those characters and us, the fans. Everything I just stated can be considered some kind of hype buildup to draw new people and to keep them. And then XY did the brilliant thing with XYZ. They not only kept the things which made them popular, like animation, the new Ash, character progression and more shipping, but they also created even more hype with the likes of Ash Green Ninja, Alan, the Carlos League, Zygarde, while also improving the things they already did good, like the character progression, which you could see with Bonnie and Punichan, even better animation, and building up even more hype in regards for Amor shipping, until the ultimate climax, aka the kiss. While XY has drawn new and old fans, 
who are solely interested in the anime itself and nothing else, XYZ went overboard by even bringing people into the anime who either only were interested in the Gen 1 anime or only were interested in the games. Things like Ash Greninja and Zygarde in my opinion was the first time where the anime was ahead of the games and where the games had to promote the content provided by the anime. Normally it's the other way around and things like the Carlos League and the Serena Kiss went viral. Everyone, no matter if Pokemon community or not, was talking about the Carlos League or the Amor Shipping Kiss. And now compare the XY slash XYZ achievements that this hype has created compared to Sun and Moon and honestly it's a joke if not downright cruel to compare XY to Sun and Moon because it's not even fair. Sun and Moon has amazing characters, believe me guys, they really have amazing characters and animation but how can they ever, ever reach the bar that XY has set for them? Mighty boys and girls, let me ask you one thing. What does Sun and Moon has to do to reach the achievements like XY? The poor Sun and Moon anime struggles to have that potential of reaching all fans and even going viral worldwide. And Sun and Moon tried its best. Believe me, they really did. They improved Team Rocket. They have their own unique style and animation. They have good characters. They tried with the Aether arc. They tried with the Necrozma arc. They finally improved their character writing and, and story writing and even brought in new characters like Guzma and Meltan. But none of those things have ever, and in my opinion, will never reach the high potential and achievements that the other aspects of XY and XYZ did. The only time Sun and Moon has has drawn the attention of, of the outside world was either due to controversy thanks to their art style or due to nostalgia. They couldn't create their own hype so they relied on the past gen and if you look at that, that's kinda sad. XY did everything on their own without help of the past and with their own power. XY did not only achieve but in my opinion they overachieved and definitely reached people outside of their own borders. And to be Sun and Moon, to be the successor of such a series, I'm sorry for the language but they were fucked from the very beginning. My solution? We shouldn't compare both series and instead of that see them as their own entities. Because Sun and Moon not only subjectively but also objectively can't overcome XY when it comes to overall achievements and impact on the community. So just enjoy Sun and Moon for what it is and not for what it can't be. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this little discussion video and just like always, I see you guys in the comments down below. Bye guys!